Vsauce, Kevin here. We've all heard the term starving artists, but even artists at some point have to eat. Surrealist painter Salvador Dali published a Surrealist cookbook in 1973. Filled with lavish illustrations, strange musings, and of course, recipes. Like frog pasties, frog legs sautéed in garlic and parsley and served fried underneath a chilled yogurt whipped cream. Despite featuring Dolly's unique paintings, his cookbook didn't sell many copies. And today, it's considered quite rare. But this is actually pretty good. Maybe it should have sold more copies. That yogurt thing is amazing. The frog legs are a little chewy, but uh, the topping makes up for it. I'd probably eat this topping on, on, on a shoe. It's really delicious. <laughs> Lord Byron is considered one of the greatest British poets to ever live. But while studying at Cambridge, he became obsessed with losing weight and only ate biscuits, water, and potatoes covered in apple cider vinegar. He lost over 60 pounds and apple cider vinegar became the first fad celebrity diet. Whoa. That's, uh, that's vinegary. I can see why he lost some weight eating nothing but this. He probably didn't smell very good either. Oh, vinegary Lord Byron. In 1976, Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, went to a restaurant that knew all about his love of peanut butter. They recommended the Fool's Gold Loaf, a four pound peanut butter, bacon, and blueberry jam sandwich, named for its lofty price tag of $49.95. Elvis loved the sandwich so much, he once flew his private jet from Graceland to Denver just to eat it. To make a Fool's Gold Loaf, start with French bread covered in butter and bake at 350 degrees until the bread is golden brown. Slice it in half, hollow out the insides, then fill it with peanut butter, jelly, and 450 grams of cooked bacon. It feeds eight to 10 people, or one king of rock and roll. Oh man, this is amazing. This is what being the best tastes like. No! Bring that back! I need more full skull loaf. Sylvia Plath was a Pulitzer Prize winning poet, novelist, and author of The Bell Jar, a book loved by many academics, including by my friend and favorite YouTube scholar, Sparky Sweets, PhD. Thanks, Kevin. Sylvia Plath also loved to bake and often used cooking as a way to turn writer's block into a blockbuster dinner. Girl used food imagery in her writing and had even planned to write a short story called The Day of the 24 Cakes Before She Died. But her favorite thing to bake was a tomato soup cake, which is supposedly delicious, but sounds like something a fancy hobo eats out of an old pair of Air Jordans. Back to you, Kevin. From her personal journals, we know that Plath wrote the poem Death and Company while baking a tomato soup cake, which aside from tomato soup features cream cheese frosting, cinnamon, nutmeg, and raisins. It's like carrot cake. I'm looking for the tomato soup. Eh, there's a tomato soup. It's, it's good, it's cake. Charles Darwin is best known for his theory of evolution. He also wanted to eat basically every animal ever. As a student, he started the Glutton Club to eat unusual animals. And during voyages, he ate iguanas, rodents, ostriches, and puma. But perhaps Darwin's strangest snack of all was the armadillo, which once taken out of its shell, he said, looks and tastes like duck. And as always, thanks for watching. This, I don't know about this. I think I got a bone. I'm gonna eat more of it though. I mean, it's like eating really dry, dark meat. I'm not gonna open an armadillo restaurant tomorrow. That's all I'm saying. 
Special thanks to Dr. Sparky Sweets and the gang over at Wisecrack. Seriously, go subscribe to their channel. I actually made a video for them talking about my favorite book. So check that out. Subscribe while you're there, okay? I'm gonna go brush my teeth 400,000 times.